In the spotlight tonight, so far, the only country that wants Edward Snowden is the United States. The NSA leaker stuck in the Moscow airport has requested asylum from at least 20 countries, according to WikiLeaks. No country has said yes to Snowden's request, but he did receive maybes from the presidents of Venezuela and Bolivia, who were both in Moscow today for the Gas Exporting Countries Forum. This young man of 19 years old has to be protected by the international community. Once I arrive to Caracas, I will provide my official opinion. If Snowden asks for political asylum, will you provide it for him? Yes, why not? If we receive a request, we are willing to consider it and enter into discussions. The Bolivian foreign minister says that the plane bringing their president home from Russia today was rerouted to Austria after France, Portugal and Italy refused to let it cross their airspace because of suspicions that Edward Snowden was on board. The plane remains now at in, in, at the airport in Austria. The Austrian foreign ministry says that Snowden was not on the plane. Hours earlier, the spokesperson for the State Department of the United States said this. We have been in touch, as we have been for several days now, with a broad range of countries that could serve as to either transit spots or final destinations. And what we've been communicating is, of course, what we've been communicating publicly, that uh, Mr. Snowden has been accused of uh, leaking classified information. Um, he is somebody that we would uh, like to see returned to the United States, of course, uh, and we are hopeful that uh, that will happen. Joining me now, MSNBC's Joy Reid. Uh, Joy, uh, this was uh, one of those uh, really active days in the story, the pursuit story anyway, with the fake out on the, uh, the Bolivian plane. Uh, but this is getting uh, to be much more difficult than it seemed that the Snowden team, if, there, if we can call it a team, thought this was going to be. Yeah, I mean, it's very dramatic. It's sort of almost cinematic. Um, but it, you sort of start to get the idea that Edward Snowden didn't really think through uh, this whole escape plan when he decided to do his leak from Hong Kong. Clearly, he had not made arrangements, at least firm arrangements, to ensure that the Chinese government, that the government in Hong Kong would let him stay there. And his escape plan seems really scattershot and a little desperate. And But what you're also seeing, Lawrence, is you're seeing, you know, partly a diplomatic issue where... Snowden's routes out of the Moscow airport are being shut down systematically, in part because you have these countries having to decide, do they want to risk their relationship, their trade relationships, uh, their diplomatic relationships with the United States for this one guy who did leak classified information on his own government. So he's not necessarily, you know, an act as someone that you want to bring in uh, to your country. And then there was this really great piece in Foreign Policy magazine where they made a point, I won't take credit for it, that states tend to be very reluctant to act in concert with non-state actors. And WikiLeaks, because he's now associated with them, is this kind of frightening figure for every one of these governments. It's not just about thumbing their nose at the United States. There is this sort of non-state actor at play here, which is WikiLeaks. Let's listen to what Glenn Greenwald told Chris Hayes tonight, just a little over an hour ago, about the statements that were re released by Edward Snowden yesterday. Of course I'm being speculative here because I don't actually know who wrote it or who influenced it. It seemed to me like the core ideas were very much consistent with how Edward Snowden thinks, but that it was sort of flavored with some person who isn't Edward Snowden. If you, I think all the world really knows about him in terms of how he expresses himself is the video is that, video, yeah. that Laura Poitras made um, of, of my interviewing him. Um, and he's very mild-mannered, very soft-spoken, even though his ideas are, are, are very emphatic. So the idea that he won't accept asylum in Russia if he's not allowed to continue to leak, the idea that he thinks that the U.S. is being extremely unjust in its treatment of him and, and in pressure in other countries. Those are all consistent with his philosophy, but I agree there was sort of a virulent tone to it that didn't strike me as his own. So, uh, Joy, there's uh, Glenn Greenwald, who knows Edward Snowden better than anyone else we know knows Edward Snowden, uh, who's saying that those statements yesterday seem to him 
to be influenced and have word choice, tone, things like that in there that are not Snowden's. Yeah, and you also had the sort of rumor mill that was flying yesterday that apparently when WikiLeaks released that statement that was re-released with an edit. And then you also had, look, his dad uh, came out earlier this in, in the week and said, listen, there, there may be some manipulation of my son by WikiLeaks. And now all of a sudden his statements are sort of coming out. And, they, and it's all got this very grandiose tone to it. It's got this tone that is very Julian Assange. And you do start to wonder if at some point, because WikiLeaks is handling, it seems everything. They appear to be the ones paying for and facilitating his travel and his movements. And they also seem to be the ones who are shaping his public statements. You, you do start to wonder if maybe Edward Snowden is being manipulated somewhat for an agenda that is really more about Julian Assange's agenda than really saving him and saving his own skin. So you almost wish the kid would find a new attorney, you know, some independent attorney who had nothing to do with WikiLeaks, somebody who could give him some really sound advice. And you know what, Lawrence, that best advice might be to just come back to the United States. It might be his only route. Come back here and face justice and stand up for what he did. Well, listen, I mean, I, I can completely understand not wanting to spend the next 20, 30 or 40 years in prison. So uh, I, I wouldn't ascribe any particular great nobility right. to his uh, trying to stay away from the United States. But trying to stay out of prison is a perfectly <laughs> reasonably sane thing Absolutely. to try to do. And a any way he can pull that off uh, makes perfect sense to me. Joy Reid, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.